Is Sydney Sweeney's fame from just luck and good looks, or is there something more? Today, you'll uncover the eight transformative skills that crafted her confidence and catapulted her success on this episode of Classic Charm. So this episode of Classic Charm is going to be a little bit different. In most episodes of Classic Charm, I'm talking about how people are acting, what they're saying, how they interact to create such an incredible chemistry with other people. But for Sydney, you don't need to focus on how she's acting. I want you to focus on what she's doing and how that has contributed to her self-confidence and atmospheric rise to success. And so we're going to wipe away all of the nine marks of charm and start to focus on on the basics of what makes a person happy, confident, and attractive. And when you get down to the absolute basics, there's only three things, presence, purpose, and health. Now, Sydney Sweeney has all three of these qualities, but today we're gonna focus on her strongest trait, purpose. Purpose gives you a reason for living. It's what whips you up out of bed instead of slowly rolling out for another day. When you have purpose, you have a North Star in life. You have direction. You have value to give to the world in whatever way that may be. And knowing that you're improving the world in some little or big way gives someone who is otherwise maybe depressed, lost in life, hopeless, it gives that person meaning. And it makes you feel like you actually matter to somebody or to something. And having purpose actually makes your life exciting because now you have something to dedicate yourself to every day. And that purpose works best when it's especially something you love to do and something where you love to see change happen. Now, Sydney's life purpose is obviously making people happy and excited and inspired through making movies. What, did you think that Sydney Sweeney was just some hot girl that ended up on a TV show, that ended up on some rom-com, and oh, she's so famous because of her boobs, right? And because she's so hot, right? No. Actually not. We're about to go a little deeper into who Sydney Sweeney really is. And it all starts out when she was very young. She was just a little kid. And she told her parents that she wanted to be an actor. Five-year-old Sweeney grew up outside of Spokane, Washington, where she got her first taste of acting with a low-budget zombie movie. <laughs> Mommy, Daddy. I always told my parents that I wanted to be an actress. So when I was about 11, 12 years old, this movie came to town and I found out and I put together a five-year business plan of what could happen if they let me audition for this movie. And if I audition for the movie, then I'll meet people who could introduce me to casting directors or agents and then I could get into short films and commercials and then it could take me to pilot season. Like I looked into everything. Wow. And my parents realized that I was very serious about this. Here's another thing that you might not have known about Sydney Sweeney. She was the valedictorian of her high school and she was on the dean's list in college every year. She loves school. She loves applying herself to something, but also she loves doing it in a way that actually fulfills her dreams, fulfills her life purpose. Now, the first thing about Sydney Sweeney that contributes to her incredible sense of purpose in life is having a plan and sticking to it, even to the point where she specifically went to college for business to get a business degree just so she could learn more about the movie business because she didn't want to just be an actor. She also wanted to eventually try her hand as a movie producer. Now think about that. At such a young age, she wasn't thinking small. She wasn't just going, oh, I just want to be a successful actor, which is already huge, by the way. She was going, I want to be a producer. I want to make movies. The first project that I greenlit with my company, 5050 Films, is The Player's Table. I partnered with Crazy Rose and Endeavor Content, and we sold it to HBO Max. I always wanted to start a production company. I, I've always loved the business side of things. Now, not only is that something unusual for somebody at that age, but it is something that is not taught to women. Women are not taught to get into the movie industry and to be a movie producer. That's just not something they're taught to do. But it's very clear researching Sydney over the past week that she's not the type of person that just follows what everyone else is doing and what she's supposed to do. She doesn't even watch TV or movies. She doesn't even listen to music. She's not into astrology. She doesn't even drink anything other than water. <laughs> she just drinks water. I only drink water. The thing about Sydney is she doesn't allow herself to get distracted because she's so focused on her plan for success and where she's going that nothing else matters. 
She has her blinders on to everything that's a distraction, and she just is focusing on getting to where she wants to go. And I love how here she explains how she even learned social skills on how to interact with like the big wigs in the movie industry. She wanted to make sure that she knew how to communicate properly so they would take her seriously. You're kind of thrown into this entire industry as a young kid and you had to be an adult. Mm -hmm. So I learned very fast the importance of being able to handle yourself in a room with grown men and how to handle yourself in a situation like this yeah. and how to speak properly. So it was a quick learning experience. Yeah. Having good social skills are so incredibly important and not just in business, but also in your personal relationships like dating or in your friendships. And that's why Sydney was so focused on learning good social skills to get to the places that she wanted to. Well, guess what? You don't have to go down that path that Sydney did by learning social skills by trial and error the same way that I did, I actually created a free class on Skillshare called Conversation Mastery that teaches you everything you need to know how to have a good conversation from start to finish with anyone. Now this Conversation Mastery class also teaches you how to have a conversation in any context, be that dating, business, or with friends. How do you ask the right questions? How do you never run out of anything to say? How do you ask somebody out in a non-creepy way? You can get this class by scanning the QR code right here or clicking the link in the description. Once you sign up for the free month long trial of Skillshare, you have to put in your credit card information. Now that's a little annoying, right? Because you hate having to put your credit card in and when are they going to charge you when you forget? So after you put in your credit card information and set up the trial to get my free class for an entire month, you just cancel the trial. And then guess what? You keep my class for a month for free, no cost, and you don't have to be scared of getting randomly charged if you don't want to continue with Skillshare. Now, if you like Skillshare and you want to learn more, there's a ton of great classes on there. You can continue with Skillshare. But if you just want my class for free, sign up, put in your credit card information. As soon as you're signed up, cancel the trial, and then you get my class for free for a month. Now, you don't have to do it right now, even though you can if you'd like to, but I'll remind you at the end of this video. Let's get back to Sydney. In high school, she was a pretty big nerd. She didn't go to parties. She just kind of did her homework and focused on getting into the movie business. I did not go to parties. I was pretty boring. I like going on hikes with my dog. You know, when I think about that a lot, the difference between being a fan and being somebody that actually is the one that's making the moves in life, being the person that people are watching, being the person that people are learning from, rather than being the person that is just constantly consuming content. Now, what kind of person are you? I want you to think about it for a second. Are you the person that's just consuming entertainment for fun or are you the person that's providing value, that's being the person that is giving to others, that is giving the entertainment, that's teaching other people, that's helping other people? Which person are you? Now, obviously, there's a balance to everything. You don't have to be just like Sydney, where Sydney only is working and she doesn't focus on really anything else. You could have a balance. But in that balance, where are you? Now, the next important aspect of what makes Sydney Sweeney so damn purposeful is preparation. And this is so important. Before you do something, make sure that you are prepared to get it done right. Now, Sydney does this when she's preparing for a role. She doesn't just read the lines and memorize them. For each and every one of Sydney Sweeney's characters, she writes that person's entire life all the way up until the first word on on the script. She wants to know that person back to front, inside and out. So when she is performing, she is not just acting, she's being that character. I create my characters very interestingly. Mm -hmm. So I create books for my characters and I create from the day they were born until the first page of the script. Mm -hmm. And it's like this interactive timeline journal diary of their entire lives. And I try to keep them separate from myself as much as possible. I usually create a playlist for who she is, what she would listen to, and that way whenever I'm reading a script or I start building the character and working on backstory, I'm listening to the kind of music that I think she would listen to. And it's kind of like a big deep dive into a black hole of music. <laughs> oh gosh, I'd have to pull up my phone, Maria. Do you have my phone? Library, playlist. Don't laugh at Cassie. 
Okay, she has Beautiful by Bozzy, Me and the Devil by Soap and Skin. She has a lot of Soap and Skin, Wonder, Retrograde, Billie Eilish, very in her feelings. Now she took this idea of really preparing for a role and she also applied it to producing movies. The first project that I greenlit with my company, 5050 Films, is The Player's Table. I partnered with Crazy Rose and Endeavor Content and we sold it to HBO Max. I always wanted to start a production company. I, I've i always loved the business side of things and I think because I love creating my characters to such an extent, I wanted to do that to an entire world. And I'm allowing myself to do that through the company and kind of build an entire world for a movie or a TV show instead of just a character. Now the funny thing about Sydney is her preparation doesn't just end in her professional life, it also is in her personal life as well. Just even in this like little quick clip of her showing her closet, she specifically mentioned, I like to keep my closet organized so that my brain could be organized. I always feel that if my closet is organized, then my brain is organized. Think about that. When you walk into your room, is it dirty, is it messy, and does that stop you from wanting to get shit done. If you're worrying about everything around you and how dirty, oh, I have to clean this, oh, I have to do this. If everything's already taken care of, you're prepared to get what you want done at the highest level. Now, something else very important about being somebody that's purposeful is even though you stick to your plan, you're also the type of person that loves to learn. But the way that Sydney learns isn't just for fun. Her learning always has some sort of application. She always wants to use it for something. She wants to use it to accomplish something. And I always love the stories of how Sydney comes to learn things. Like for instance, how she learned how to repair a Ford Bronco, a vintage Ford Bronco. I I was like, hey, I bought this old car. I want to fix it up, but I kind of want to learn how to do it myself. That's so And so cool. he let me bring it into the shop and he just walked me through every step and we changed the transmissions and the brakes and the interior. Or when she was filming sharp objects, she had the opportunity to learn from the producer and the director and sit in with them while they were editing. When I was filming sharp objects, I had a small role, but Jean-Marc created such an incredible environment on set where I felt like I didn't have to leave. So I would come and hang out and sit at Video Village with his producing partner, Nathan Ross, and I would just sit and watch and learn and listen. And I remembered during that time, I was like, I'm gonna try and observe everything I can because I wanna do this one day. I didn't know when, how, any of it. I just knew that if I can, be in these rooms and learn from these people that I can kind of like take bits and pieces and put it into my own. Now something really special about having a sense of purpose is it gives you this incredible confidence to do what you want without fear. You're just moving so quickly into the direction of success that you're not even stopping to think about, oh, what about, what if I get, what if this? No, you're just going now. That being said, we all get anxious, we're humans. Just like me, Sydney Sweeney actually has performance anxiety. But does she allow performance anxiety to hold her back? I have the worst stage fright. You do? Oh. I have horrible stage fright. Oh. I know it doesn't seem like it, but like literally like I'm Jeez, shaking. Too. Yeah, as as did too. I did, but as long as it's not crippling, it probably helps No, you. it's more like an ex excitement, nerve. My mom always told me to take those nerves and turn it into something good, right, so right, yeah. exactly. And I get really bad anxiety in social settings. I have stage fright. Well, I always believe in facing your fears. Yep. And I also like to find things that challenge me. Because if I'm not being challenged and I'm not trying things that are new, then I'm not having fun. So I face one of my biggest fears. So what's the scariest moment? Is it like the three, two, one, we're live? Like what's the... It's it's the walking down and then standing there and you go, oh my gosh, this is this is live, this is happening. Yeah. And I was talking to Maude afterwards and I was like, my mouth dried up. I, I, I felt like my lips were stuck <laughs> to my teeth and I couldn't speak. And she was like, yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> when you have a sense of purpose, all of your fears, anxiety that you might just naturally have from like past experiences, they mean nothing because you're so focused on the future goal. You're so focused on succeeding that nothing absolutely nothing can stop you. And how does that motivation happen? Once again, I want you always thinking about, I am going to change somebody's life. 
I'm going to change something in the world for the better. And when you constantly have that in your head, there's nothing else is important. All of these little fears and doubts and, oh, but what if I, nope. Because you're saying to yourself, I am going to change the world and nothing is gonna stop me. Not even a little or a lot of anxiety. Now this section I think is the most impressive because it's just, come on, like these things, I would be scared to do the things that Sydney was doing. And it's so funny because she's so unassuming. She doesn't come off like that type of person that is super confident, but at the same time, she just gets things done. This is taking charge. Here's the story on how she created her production company. I love building my characters. I built these books for my characters from the day they're born to the first page of the script. And I just wanted to do more. So I was like, I want to build worlds. Let's start from the ground and just build that up. And I love reading books. And so I was reading all of these books and I started optioning them and I packaged them and I take them out to studios or financiers and streamers. And I started selling them and and developing the scripts. And I, I love that process. It's, it's such an amazing, cool, creative process to be a part of that's also on the business side, which I really love to learn and navigate. So I've been kind of just building that side of my career and seeing where it goes and seeing what excites me. And this last year, I produced two movies, Immaculate, which was a psychological thriller that I filmed in Italy that I'm super excited for and I can't wait to share. And then Anyone But You, which is a rom-com with Sony that Will Gluck directed with Glenn Powell and I. And we just got done filming and it was a blast. It was like a summer camp. It was amazing. So it's been a really, really fun being able to just have a bigger voice and have more creative say and stuff because I think it's important for young females to be able to be more involved. When she's talking about any problems or issues that she might be personally having while she's on set filming a movie, she just kind of shrugs things off and gets back to work. She doesn't care. She just wants to get things done. The, the spider actually bit me in the middle of the scene, but nobody called cut because they thought I was just making a very dramatic, interesting choice mm -hmm. in this scene. And Glenn was the only one who finally <laughs> caught on that. So they thought you were acting. They thought I was acting, it, but it actually bit me. And Glenn goes, wait, this is a little more serious. You do. Know. It's a real, yeah, there's there's a different tone to her <laughs> voice when somebody's actually being bit by a spider. <laughs> but but she, yeah, it's a huge huntsman spider. It's crazy. Holy I had are you okay? What guess. happened? Do you have to go to the hospital? Or? No, I just took like a couple of meds and went You're back okay. to work. She's a social chair of our set. Sydney doesn't take downtime, she doesn't sleep. And by the way, who do you think made the movie Anyone But You? That was Sydney. How do you think Glenn Campbell became the lead in the movie Anyone But You? Sydney won best fight for Euphoria at the MTV Movie Awards, and I hand her her golden popcorn, and we had chemistry right off the bat. It was amazing, and so much so that she decided to give me a, a role in this movie. Yeah, I, I called him up and we had a Zoom, and I pitched him the whole concept of the movie and I said, do you want to read it? And he gave it a read and he liked it. The thing that I could learn from Sydney Sweeney is that nobody is going to do things for you. Nobody's going to accomplish what you want to accomplish. So you always have to be the one that steps up and does it all yourself. That doesn't mean don't ask for help. It means you lead the way. To me, being a producer and whenever I personally will put my name as a producer on a project means I'm a part of it from the beginning to the end. I don't want to miss a step. I want to be a part of everything I can put my hands on. I do not like the idea of just putting my name on something and taking credit where it's not due. I want to conceptualize the project and, and bring it all together. So to me, being a producer is basically like being a parent and helping a project grow. You are a business. Like I am a business. You are a business. Every actor is their own company. And it's really important to know how to run that company. No, I don't want you to think that means that you should be a domineering leader, that you're doing all the work for everybody and you're like demanding things from people. In fact, the name of her production company shows that Sydney Sweeney is the type of person that loves collaboration. She's a born leader because good leaders are the type of people that bring people together, that empower other people to do their job just as well as she is. I'm mad at myself for never verbally mentioning 5050 /50 films during this conversation which is your production company. Where did the name come from? And this question is from Emmanuel. Hi. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Um, I truly believe that it takes everybody 
to create something. Like, it's not just one person. I want to be 50-50 with all of my partners. I want to make sure that everybody has equal deals, feels that they are all equally at the table, and I just want to make sure that I'm 50-50. The entire crew is so vital to everything day-to-day -day on a set, from the PAs, grip, sound, transpo, crafty, like, Everyone makes the day happen, and just you have to thank everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. Your, your mentality with how this business operates, is so, it's so clear how well-suited you are to be a leader as a producer, and I love that. Now, this story is the kind of most mind-blowing to me because at this point, Sydney was not a movie star. She was not in really any movie, at least leading lady in any movies. The way that Sydney just goes about business strategy is incredible. And, you know, talking about being on Madam Web, of course, you know, it was a big flop. Not a lot of people liked it. I didn't think it was that bad. But but she took that opportunity of being on Madam Web to pitch Sony movies with her own production company. Madam Web is my first ever studio film that I ever got cast in. I am so thankful to Sony because it was such a building block for me. While I was filming that, I was actually building the packages for both Immaculate and Anyone But You. I then took Anyone But You out once I put the whole package together and put the pitch together. I called up Sony and I said, hey, I have this movie. We're filming together. Let's build a relationship. That's how Anyone But You got made. And I would never have been able to do that without Madam Web. Yeah. Here's another thing that all purposeful people do. They never take no for an answer. And Sydney Sweeney is no different. In fact, there's so many instances in Sydney Sweeney's journey that contributed to her success because she didn't take no for an answer and she did things herself. I always had the motivation that I wasn't going to accept no, even from like 10 years old. But the feeling of I'm here, I deserve this, I feel confident in the space didn't happen until much, much later. So can you tell me something you did on Immaculate that you know you'll be able to look back on and say, damn, I'm really proud of what I did there. I'm really proud of myself for not taking the answer no. I mean, I didn't get cast in the project to begin with. They didn't end up making the movie. And I didn't let that stop me. She really does have this vibe of, if you can't help me, then I'm gonna do it myself. And that is the go-getter mentality. Most people, they go, uh, I don't really know what I'm doing. Somebody can't help me. I don't know if I could do it myself. Where with Sydney, she goes, well, let me figure it out. It goes back to her learning. It goes back to her planning. It goes back to her being so focused. And it goes back to her taking charge. She never takes no for an answer. I always find that the ones that I want are not the ones I'm getting offered. They're the ones that I have to fight for. And they're the ones that I have to either make myself. Now let's talk about Sydney Sweeney's looks because I know so many people believe that she's famous just for her body, just for her looks. That's not really the case. In fact, Sydney kind of grew up as an awkward kid. I'll let her explain. I've definitely struggled with a lot of body dysmorphia and um, been self-conscious, judging myself in a very sick, hard way. With Cassie, I mean, everything's out there in the public and I can't really control that. So it's helped me in a therapeutic, weird way, accept my body in a different way because even when I was younger, I had boobs in middle school and I got horribly bullied for it because no one else had gone through puberty. And so I hated my body. So having a character like Cassie and embracing it has been really, really powerful for myself. There seems to be two opinions about Sydney Sweeney and the attention on her body. The one side is just kind of obsessed with her beauty, objectifying her, not really caring who she is beyond that, kind of just seeing her as a Barbie doll. The other side says, this is creepy, don't do this. But Sydney, I think she kind of takes the middle road in this case. Obviously, I don't think she likes being dehumanized and objectified. But at the same time, I think she knows this is part of the movie industry. This is part of fame. And I think purposeful people learn to leverage everything that's going on in their life to their benefit. She was insecure about her body at a young age, and now I think she has learned how to embrace it and be proud of it. Here she speaks about how she believes her character on Euphoria doesn't know how to communicate with people without using her body. She doesn't know how to communicate without showing her body. 
Like that is a form of communication for her and she was never taught that you did not need that. Now I feel that Sydney is the exact opposite. I think she knows exactly how to communicate and run her life without using her body. But at the same time, I think she knows how to leverage her beauty to get to where she wants to go. What are you thinking <laughs> inviting your grandparents to that? Well, and, and how I wasn't they, thinking, how, I was so excited. And I how are they with it? Up. They said I, I have the best in Hollywood. <laughs> Your grandparents said that? Yeah, my grandma, she's right there, she's right there. All right then. <laughs> That's fantastic yeah, that she, she approves, grandma approves. So instead of getting depressed and down and going, oh, this is what everybody sees me as, she goes, you know what? I'm gonna use this to my benefit. Now, even though Sydney Sweeney is a self-proclaimed workaholic. I'm a workaholic. She's not exactly the stereotypical workaholic. What do you see when you think of a workaholic? It's somebody really extroverted, really outgoing, really fast paced, always rushing everywhere. Think of like a Gordon Ramsay. Smell that shit! That is fucking rancid! The most disgusting kitchen ever! Sydney's the opposite. She's very calm. In fact, she's an introvert. And this is another great quality about her. She has learned how to balance that hard work with a strong inner peace. This is another part of those three tenets to being a happy, successful, confident, attractive person. Presence, purpose, and health, right? So she also has presence inside of her. She's calm at all times. And I want you to notice that in all of her interviews, she's always poised at the same time, relaxed. I like love to imagine that as peaceful and tranquil and centered as you are that like when I'm gone and you're in your trailer that you're just like that shit crazy. So I want you to keep that in mind. If you're an introvert, if you're more of a quiet, maybe timid type of person, that doesn't mean that you can't have a strong sense of purpose. You're allowed to be a calm, cool, composed person while also having a strong focus of where you want to go and always pushing yourself every day to get to the next level in the next level in the next. Now, before we finish up here, I want to know who inspires you the most? Who do you want me to break down and analyze on the next episode of Classic Charm? I want you to put it in the comments below, or you could tweet me in the description, or you could jump into my Discord community, find the Video Ideas channel, and suggest to me a video there. If you want to see more videos on self-confidence, charm, social skills, and relationships, make sure you subscribe and like this video so you could see more in the future. We don't don't talk about toxic stuff on this channel. We only discuss healthy ways to get into the relationships that you want. Now, if you want to get my free conversation mastery class on Skillshare, you still have a few seconds to get it with the QR code here or the link in the description, and you can get started on learning the social skills that Sydney Sweeney learned in order to get where she is today. And now I'm going to leave you with a clip of Sydney talking about her older self. See you in the next video. I have this thing where I've always said that I look up to the older version of myself. So I'm hoping that the decisions that I'm making now make 40 year old Sydney proud and happy. And I've always thought that that's like really important because I'm not doing this for, I'm not trying to like follow any other person's path. I'm like, I'm hoping that whatever I do can fulfill me as much as possible and then spread as much good too.